Hi, I'm Steve Thomas. This is Cacophony at the Women's Football World Cup, a glorious celebration of female musicians and their music from around the world. In this episode, we explore Brazil, where different worlds collide and merge, and the music ends up uniquely Brazilian. Donne, Women in Music, is an indispensable internet resource for those of us looking for women composers to listen to or program. More than just a website, Donne has grown into a foundation and a network supporting women in music. It even has its own CD label. So it wouldn't have been right to make the Women's World Cup of Classical Music without the help of its founder, soprano Gabriela Di Laccio. She joined us to curate the selection of music from her home country, Brazil. We talk about the music, discovering women composers and their absence from concert programmes, but we start with how Gabriela got into music in the first place. I always think that I didn't get to music. I think music got to me because it feels to me that I always, I had to have music since I was very young. I don't have any classical musicians in my family. So it really came with me. I always say that I was the weird child liking to listen to operas in, in this tiny town in the south of Brazil. And this sound and this of the harmonies really touched me when I was singing at the school choir, very eight years old. And it stayed with me. There's a, always that question, what would you do if you were not a, a musician? Uh, nothing else. I would always sing because it's too much a big part of who I am. There is a big actress in Brazil called Fernanda Montenegro, and she's a, a really amazing icon. And she tells a story when people say to her, oh, I want to be an actor. What's your advice? And she always says, give up, wait a couple of years. And then if you can't live without that, if it hurts, then go back. And it's that's for me. <laughs> I can't live without singing or having music in my life. So it's pretty much engraved part of my soul. And I don't have a choice. I don't think I chose. It chose me and I just have to do my best <laughs> to, to serve, I think. That's how I feel. That's brilliant. I, I really love this bit of all the conversations I have. Yeah. It's, it's really moving, actually. It's really nice. <laughs> Oh, it sounds like a Disney movie, but it's really what it is. <laughs> I know, it's true, right? Yeah, because no. it's such a hard career. People yeah. look from afar and they see glam, but we all know how hard it is. It's a career of resilience. You never get to the point, never get there. The there is always movable. And so you're always developing, you're always changing and improving and self-improving. So it's tough, <laughs> but yeah. it's priceless at the same time. And you run a website called Donne, which is a fabulous resource for people looking for women composers, where you've gathered so much of this information together in one place and researched composers that we don't know anything about. And I'm wondering, because I talked to lots of people where there was a moment where they went, hang on, all the music that I'm performing is by men. Did you have one of those? I had one of those, sadly, too late, I feel. I, thought, well, I wish I had this one, I don't know, in my teens. Because the website, Donne, which means women in Italian, for those who didn't know, it happened almost as a, an accident, a coincidence. I was walking on the South Bank market on a Sunday afternoon here in London, and you have all these stands with these books. And I found this encyclopedia called the International Encyclopedia of Women Composers, which was there two massive volumes, 600 pages each. And I was really puzzled. This was back in 2016, 17. And I bought it, I took it home. And my first thought was, oh, I can't believe it. I bet this is just a big list because I'm a very geeky student, always been a very good girl student, and I research for Baroque music that I do. I always have to dig into things yeah. I knew, I don't know, 20 maybe women composers. This guy listed 6,000 in 1984. I was Whoa. shocked with my own. Yeah, the encyclopedia has 6,000 women, and he did the, this amazing research it's a piece of art, this encyclopedia. 
And then I was shocked. I was shocked because I thought I was the only ignorant people in the world in the history of <laughs> music. But then I started to realize, that, hold on a minute, I've been going to concerts all my life. I never really questioned any programs. I never even noticed if it were men or women because you just accept they're men, of course. And that didn't set well with me. I was, how could I think that? You know, I'm a woman. Yes. <laughs> and so I started to research a little bit. And I, you don't have to go much further nowadays, thanks to YouTube, Spotify, so much more to be found. And I was shocked with the beautiful music, the amazing work. But I think the thing that really moved me to do something was the stories behind the historical women as well, because we think oh, it's hard to be a woman nowadays, but imagine being a woman. 16th yes. century or or even before and i wish i was listening to these stories when i was a kid in brazil growing up in brazil you know dreaming this crazy dream of being a classical singer when my mom was always a good storyteller she always told me stories of men beethoven was deaf Einstein was dyslexic and i was telling everybody this story until i realized oh, what's going on <laughs> why is this music not being played so much music still to be discovered and I honestly just wanted to do my part. I tell this joke that my husband said to me <laughs> after a while, look, it's very nice. You're telling me the stories of women composers at breakfast, but I'm an engineer. I'm not going to do anything <laughs> about it. <laughs> so <laughs> are you going to do anything? So I, I put this website in 2018. I didn't imagine it was going to be any more than that. Uh, within the website, there is a thing called the big list of women composers, which for me was what it was called and now it has over 5,000 names and it, it keeps growing every day. It's the biggest foundation, I think, online uh, multimedia resource dedicated to women composers. Uh, a few months after I put that tiny website, I got messages from women from all over the world saying, oh my God, thank you so much. I'm a composer. Can you add me to your list? And, and it was this amazing thing that happened in my life. As a performer as well, I realized how much I was not performing works by women and I'm probably the most annoying colleague nowadays when I'm doing concerts <laughs> with people. <laughs> so, so how guys, yeah. excuse me. Where's the female representation on this program? Absolutely. Yeah. And then, of course, and then I, it's so much to learn. It's been a, an education for me as well in terms of diversity and inclusion in this industry. As a singer, I didn't notice much not being involved in things because there's always space for sopranos and, and tenors and equally in opera. But it, it just made me realize as a composer, you are behind a piece of paper. <laughs> so yes. it's even tougher as a woman performer. It's also hard uh, as a woman conductor. And, and it's an education. Every day I learn something new. And it's just made me realize that so much more to be done which is exciting and mm -hmm. ang makes me a bit angry, passionate and angry at the same time to continue. From your list, your big list, there's a, a richness and variety of music from all around the world and from throughout history. And you've reflected that in the list of pieces that's five or maybe six pieces that you've brought us from Brazil. So let's talk about some of them. I think it's very important that the the big list reflects more and more all the internationality. There's so many great composers that we still don't know about it, especially in, in countries like South America, when it's hard harder to be an artist there because we feel a bit isolated. So yeah. it's a great pleasure for me to talk about Brazilian composers today. Yeah. You have to start with Francisca Gonzaga, who was a huge pioneer in the history, not only in the music of Brazil, in the history of Brazil. He was the daughter of a freed slave. Her father was the owner of the farm. And he chose to ah. give her a... Yeah. So <laughs> he freed her mother. But he chose to bring her into the house and give her a, an European education. So she was taught... The goal was to get a husband. So she was taught all this uh, European way of playing and uh, piano and composition. But she was really a torn between all of the African influences that she was very familiar with because it was part of her life and her genetics as well. So she combined both cultures together. So the African rhythms and the European kind of 
school that she had, and she generated a new genre almost, which is music of Brazil. She was hugely controversial, divorced, left her husband with three kids, made her career, first woman to make a career as a professional musician by selling music, by teaching first woman composers, uh, um, a conductor, as far as we know, as well in Brazil. She was a huge social activist. She fought for the abolition of slavery. She also, when people started to play her music a lot, she realized that she needed to protect her music. So she was also helped to create the first copyright society for musicians. Ah. In Brazil. And she died in her 80s, still composing. She influenced people like Villa Lobos, and many other musicians and artists that will come afterwards. The first piece is by her, uh, and is a, a piano uh, piece called Gaúcho. And uh, in this particular uh, version, the, the pianist took the liberty to add some of the European influences that she might have been using as part of that composition. And that's the first piece. Yeah. I really enjoyed it when the list Hungarian Rhapsody suddenly walks through the door in the middle yes. of this tango. Exactly. So I think she she wanted to, she was playing and she felt, oh, I guess checking out Francisca Gonzaga would say yes, because she was such a improviser, experimenting different things. And we, we, we decided, okay, go for it. <laughs> Artistic license. Yeah. Inspired by the composer as well. Let's talk about Katharina so Domenici. So Katharina was one of these discoveries that happened when I uh, started to discover music by women. And we were looking for composers to add to the first CD. I remember I knew her name as a pianist. She's a, a brilliant pianist, performer and researcher. She's a professor. She's from Sao Paulo originally, but lives in Porto Alegre, which is my hometown, the capital of the south of Brazil. And I remember getting in touch with her and asking, do you have a, a composition? I know you are a pianist. And she said, not really. I have one, uh, but I don't know. Hey, well, let's, let, let's do that one and maybe write another one. And then I would really push it because I really wanted to add living composers. She gave me this first song and then wrote another song. And then since then, uh, she, she joked that she was a composer that was in the closet. And since then, she <laughs> yeah. came out of the closet big time. And her works are absolutely beautiful. She has so many influences. She grew up near a samba school, but she also has contemporary influences. She's a fantastic contemporary piano music performer as well. Jazz and everything comes into her music. This piece, which is called Para Marcia, for Marcia, is part of a cycle of uh, piano solos that she wrote for women who were special in, in her life. I really recommend you guys to discover the fresh out of the closet, not so fresh, but Katarina Domenici. <laughs> so if you're short of composers, you just get people to become <laughs> composers? Not really. I mean, I, it's just one. But I guess, sometimes, <laughs> I guess sometimes people feel the confidence to do it. And the once they do it, they yeah. feel like they can do more. I, I don't know. It means a lot when she says this because uh, she's a fantastic artist that I admire so much. Honestly, her music is just, it brings everything together in terms of everything that Brazil is as well. So I, I love it. All right. So the next one. So Clarice Assad, 
uh, originally from Rio de Janeiro, but she lives in Chicago, in America for many years. And Clarice, she comes from a very inspirational family of wonderful musicians. And, and she is uh, absolutely <laughs> amazing. She's also a singer, she's a multi-instrumentalist, composer, performer, pianist. And she also travels between genres of music from the popular Brazilian popular music, her own compositions, more jazzy, and then huge orchestral pieces, first opera has been premiered in Brazil as well this year. And it's a, a great example of everything that Brazil is as well. Normally, Brazilian composers are a bit of everything. We can't really... I feel like that's a performer as well. You can't just do one thing. You feel you need to navigate between uh, genres and ideas. And this piece in particular, I thought it was super cool, which is Scattered, um, Concerto for Scat Singing Piano and Orchestra. So the name says it all. <laughs> you, just, you have a piano concerto and, this, and she's playing and at the moment there is, she will be scatting and absolutely fabulous. Uh, again, you, you you will find many different artists inside Clarice. Um, she will have a piece of music for every type of music lover. That's how I feel me with, with her music. Yeah, and so many of those different types are squeezed into this five minutes. It's completely unique. Yes, absolutely unique. The next piece I wanted to talk about is by Sylvia Berg. Again, another wonderful discovery. I knew she was a composer, but I hadn't met her until I started Donne. And she's a professor at the uh, University of Sao Paulo in the music department, but also a composer. She lives in, lived in Scandinavia for many years and has, again, writes for many forms lots of vocal music and lots of chamber music and some orchestral works as well. And in this this is also part of the Donic CD collection. So again, it was one of these things, oh, Sylvia, do you have anything? <laughs> 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 and Sylvia was interested in Hildegard von Bingen and who, again, is another incredible woman in the history of history, full stop. This woman who was a polymath, writer, composer, philosopher, mystic, advisor to popes and kings in the Middle Ages. And we're so lucky that yeah. so much of her work survived, isn't it? So, Absolutely, yeah. Really, it's astonishing. Because uh, she lived in 1100. the 1100s. Yeah. And the amount of stuff that she created, built, wrote, it's amazing. So Sylvia, we've always been fascinated by her and... When it came to this project, one of the CDs, so it's called Hildegard, Now and Then. So the first part of the CD is Hildegard chants, and the second part is Sylvia's new readings of Hildegard. So each chant is done with a different instrumentation, but only using percussion. So this piece, Caritas, Abundat in Omnia, is just voice and marimba. And in the in Sylvia's versions, each one of the songs was translated to a different language. So like, I think you had in Latin, oh. in Spanish, Portuguese, German, and it's called Spiral Pieces. So this is the number one. Thank you. 
caritas abundat in omnia. The next piece is by a composer called Elodie Boni. And Elodie is, again, is everything that Brazil is. She was born in Venezuela, grew up in Paris, went to Brazil, also has Bolivian ancestors. And I was talking to her before we did this. And I said, oh, I want to talk about you in this. But do you consider yourself Brazilian? And I said, yes, <laughs> of course. And I, and I just go, <laughs> Brazil has, well, we all have so many generations inside of us. The research into her nationality shows how seriously we're taking qualification for this time. Absolutely. <laughs> but Brazil <laughs> is the country that you find is the most. Uh, it's this richness of it's... cultures. You can never be one thing. It's impossible. I, I know people look at me because I'm from the South and it was colonized by Italians and Germans, but my, my grandmother was uh, indigenous. In fact, my grandfather was Jewish. And then we have all these people and lives inside of you. I'm so happy that Elodie definitely is included in this list. And she's a fantastic guitarist as well. And she has a, a very close relationship with popular music and all the, the folk history of each culture and all the mixture of cultures that she has inside herself. None of us should define music anyway. Not gender fluid, but genre fluid. It's a bit like uh, Francisca Gonzaga used to do as well. We bring all these references. And it's your voice that turns into music. And really happy to include yes. one of her pieces. She is a very prolific composer and performer as well. So super recommend. So that's your five pieces and we get a really wonderful bonus that ties some threads yeah. together. So we get um, two of the composers with the added bonus <laughs> of your voice. Uh, I wanted to include this one because, uh, as you said, it just rounds things up a bit for me. This song, Lua Branca, which means white moon, is just a, a very simple, romantic, beautiful song written by Francisca Gonzaga which is, a, again, was a, a big hit, and recreated or with a new arrangement by Caterina Domenici, who I had the pleasure to record with her. started Don this, the BBC got in touch with me for a program they wanted to do because they got to know Francisca Gonzaga through, I think, Donne. And we did a show. And then on International Women's Day 2019, I sang live this song. Uh, and it was the first time it was ever done here in this country that Francisca Gonzaga was played live on BBC Radio 3. So it, yes. for me, had an important meaning that, as philosophical as my sound, uh, we, we can always do something. And I remember when I started put that little website, I never imagined the response that I was going to have. And it's amazing to look at all this inspiration that came into my life, but also the inspiration that the website generates for other people and as I said at the beginning, you feel like music doesn't choose you and you, it's such a priceless career to be able to share this with people. But to be able to make a tiny contribution 
to other people's lives and to be able to use my voice to perform music that people didn't know or to bring a new piece to an audience uh, and just plant a seed of curiosity. It, it, it's really even more priceless now as a performer. I, I think I leave this podcast with an invitation to everybody who is listening to start paying attention when you go to concerts. Start paying attention when you listen to music and take a, a decision to actually support more women in music. Call your radio stations, call your favorite groups. If you're a musician, just find a few pieces, add it as an encore. You never know. It's one seed. I just need one person to go. And every concert, when I sing, they say to me, oh, I never thought about that. I will really look into it. And I feel like, yes. That's a lovely philosophical way to finish. And I couldn't agree more. Gabriella Di Laccio explains her work, and Cacophony's too, in such a passionate and compelling way. I'm so pleased she was able to be part of the Women's World Cup of Classical Music and remember her call to action too. So let's have a listen to her chosen pieces in full. There's a link to a YouTube playlist in the podcast show notes. Visit cacophonyonline.com or check your podcast player for other episodes where we talk with artists curating their country's entries in the Women's World Cup. And of course, play along. Pieces of music from the countries in the World Cup football are paired up. You listen and vote for your favourites. If you're subscribed, you won't miss a thing. If you'd like and are able to support Cacophony and women composers, there's a link to coffee.com where you can make a one-off or regular donation. We'd be very grateful. Do you know anyone who'd enjoy this music and cacophony? Please share the podcast with them. Come back for more, and thanks for listening.